You're listening to SM Media, the number one place for exclusive content. Hi everyone and welcome to the latest episode of the SM Media Euro 2020 show. I'm Scott McPay, delighted to be your host as always. We've got our star-studded panel. We have Mark Shanklin. Shankers, how are we? I am good, Scott. Cheers. Brilliant. Rory Lloyd's here as well. Rory, how are we doing? All good, all good. Nice to see um, the team are tipped through once again, so <laughs> happy yeah. as Larry tonight. Predictions are all over the shop, but we've managed to get them past 10 o'clock. We have Mark Wilson here. Mark, how are we? Oh, hi, not bad. A wee bit late for me, but I've got the, the miner's hats on. I need to put 50p in the electricity meter to get the lights on, but so um, we'll get through this quickly, hopefully. Brilliant. Big, big game tomorrow, Shankers. Big game. I thought you might like to come down and watch. Who, who, what's that then? Playing Alan Kerr's mighty Darren Zamora. Oh, where's that? Eh? Uh, Penny Bird Corner Sports Club. Oh, we bit my, we bit my circle. <laughs> Aye, don't worry, it's on Sky Sports Two as well. <laughs> <laughs> but that's that's a big game of the weekend. But we've got a few other games to talk about. We'll start with the, today's games. Obviously, with two two quarter finals, Spain went through in penalties after a one one draw. Rory, was it the Weirdest penalty shootout we've seen in a while. I, I mean, a lot of penalty shootouts you see these days. The guys are that technically sound and that confident that quite often you see it going all the way. I think you know you see it going to the goalies sometimes. So to see so many top top players, you know, with such poor penalties, it was it was a it was a strange one, especially with uh, the Spanish team who are technically sound. You would expect the. Uh, Expected to be a lot closer with maybe one or two missing, but the amount that missed was, was quite incredible. But um, I think the best team went through in the end. And, uh, I would agree with that. I think Spain was a better team. Shankers, what was your thoughts on the game? Yeah, I think it was going to be a close one. France, um, beforehand, France gave... Uh, eh, sorry, Switzerland gave France a, a run for their money as well and, and took them to penalties. So I think, I think it was... Uh, Probably because a few people could see that coming before the game. Rory called it the other day there. Uh, Spain goalie goes and goes and saves a saves a day. Nine penalties, five missed. Doesn't look good, but uh, don't no having don't know what your thoughts are. No having a lot of these run ups, uh, these wee stutters and and hesitant uh, when you're running up. Just go run up, put the ball in the net. Everything stuck in your favour. Surely be be doing all the wee. St- Stutters and things like that, you're just well, getting yourself shooting yourself in the foot almost. Can you have everything in your favour? Just run up for it at the back of the net, especially as Rodri says, we what the quality of these players have. Right. Being brought on Rodri uh, with a couple of minutes to go to that, apparently, goes and misses. That looks good, doesn't it? Definitely. Well, so what was your thoughts on the game? I, I just, I. I don't think these guys should have to play extra time. I would just play the 90 minutes and then go straight to the penalties. I think fatigue's got a lot to do with it. Well, the just cut me. I know, but <laughs> I just nothing nothing of note happens in extra time usually. Um, I know Spain Croatia games a couple of goals, but I think these guys are absolutely shattered and they, they can't even be bothered taking a proper run up to hit these penalties. As I say, there was a few you could argue there was a few good penalties, but better saves, but as I say, I think for the excitement aspect, because what it would do is it would let your maybe lesser fancy teams just defend for 90 minutes, but it forces the better teams to go out and attack. You know, you, you take your luck, because I have for extra time. What it does is interfere, you know, with Coordination Street before you get to the next game, you know? It's <laughs> see the see exactly. these players then, seeing f- f- three weeks' time, they can work, they can load out my four inch block all week on the scaffold. And then go way up to Cumbernauld and play cricket and talk on a Wednesday night, and then they'll not be long in playing 30 minutes extra after their games. In no, the I, Euros. I, I think I think it's even. I, I mean, I agree with that aspect also, but I think it's even to do with the entertainment value. It, I think it right. just goes so flat in extra time. You can for, almost for, tell it's good. They're just gonna, I, gonna do it. You can tell after about ten minutes, right? This is going the full way. Go, yeah. go and get your kettle alone. Go and get the dinner made till <laughs> um, that. But I, I agree with both the guys. I, I, I thought Spain deserved to go through. Um, I actually thought when it came to penalties, I thought Switzerland because their penalties against France were always all very good. But um, no, de- de- definitely Spain to go through. But I think they'll be out in the next round anyway. Right, well, 
we'll ask the question. Did, did we'll go yes, yes or no? Was it a red card, Rory? No. Shankers. No. Wilson. Yes. How? <laughs> <laughs> oh well. I, when you when you see the replay now again, and and, and this is where the problem I, I think lies. In terms of the rules, it's a red card. You know, again for the guys that the guys here that have obviously played that high level of football, then again they speak about momentum and thing. He's the rule are he's he's out of control as such when he's he's over the ball. Both studs are shown. You know, as I say, from playing the game is like, like these guys. Yeah, I can understand why they're saying it no, but by the laws of the game, it's the law that needs change. Not necessarily it's an error from VAR or an error from the referee. You know, and I mean, I think Michael Oliver's a fantastic referee. I really do. I think he's really top notch. Every, every time I watch match of the day, I see him. I think he's he's always spot on. So I think it's actually the rule that needs change, not necessarily that. But I, I, I thought I thought it was a sin. Although I did I did enjoy. Lee Dixon's comment. Well, um, they went and said to well, Peter Walton, "Is that a red card?" And he said, "Through his spiel, went, yeah, that's a red card." And Lee Dixon said, "I don't care that Peter Walton says that's not a red card because you're hearing that from an international class defender who probably put in thousands of those tackles and was never yeah. sent off once. So I can see where, where, where the, the guys are saying obviously they've probably been tackled like that um, and probably we have to play on. But by the laws of the game, it's a red card for me." I don't think I've ever heard uh, the referee like Peter Walton and, and people that disagree with the refs. Yeah, aye, aye. totally right. Aye. Like, they just go along with the ref. You, you want them to come out and be almost no controversial, like can Adrian Durham just disagree for the sake of it, but you want them to give you like, a wee bit of, take, almost take off the referee specs for a second and, and give you an honest view as a as a I, think, I don't think I've ever heard them disagree. I think the red card in that game and the penalty in the second game, which I'm sure we'll come to later, I agree with Wilson in that you could probably make an argument both ways for that, to be a red card or no be a red card. But if you're going to look at the laws of the game, the referee's hands are tied, he needs to send them off. But it's one of those ones where it goes to VAR. See if he, see if he hadn't given him a red card, if he gave him a yellow card, it goes to VAR and the yellow card stands. It's, yeah. it's one of the ones that it needs to be obvious or an obvious error to overrule the referee. I don't think it was either way. I think you can make an argument for both. But as Wilson says, the laws of the game, I, I think he studs were up, but he did, it wasn't a straightforward one. He managed to twist his out the side and get the ball. Was he out of control? Probably was, but it wasn't really in the direction of the player. So it's one of those ones where it goes to VAR, and regardless of the referee's decision, it's not going to get overturned. You probably could argue both ways, but I think it's one of those ones that... The referee's not going to get criticised regardless of the decision he makes because you're going to have a split room, I think, every time with that one. I think this day and age, you're almost just, you give the, when you give the ref a decision to make, you can't really argue with the decision, like when you put yourself in that position kind of thing. Going back to a point that you mentioned, Shankers, though, about, you know, a referee's not going to stitch another referee up. Did, that, did something not come out about that at the World Cup in Russia? It was one of the biggest, the semi finals of the final, and there was an incident and the referee in the VAR studio went, if I stitch my mate up here, he's not going to get the World Cup final. No, that's right. So he, let it, the, the, he agreed with the, the refereeing decision oh, that was made, that? and then you know, and it, it was proved to be wrong, and they both get kind of oh, thinking right? for it, but the guy in the VAR studio was soft. He, he was retired, it was his last game, and he thought, I'm going to stitch my, co my co colleague up because he's, he, he might get the final, and they both get kind of hauled for it, and never got the final anyway. So I, I can see that point of view as well. You wouldn't want to stitch up a colleague, especially when... You know, the, the guy in the VAR today was the other referee for the Premiership. I forget his name, the young guy with the dark hair. Um, so is he going to stitch up Michael Oliver? Because then he might get the final and he'll be part of the, fin the, the referee's final in the VAR and all that. So, and a few quid, obviously, the referee's <laughs> get. Rory, this new expected goal stats saying that Spain should have the most expected goals of the tournament. Do you still think there's something lacking for Spain? Aye, of course. Um I think a lot of people would say when Spain come up against a better side, then they'll go out or they'll they'll struggle. I, I'm not saying they won't go out against Italy, but I think the way Spain play, they'll have the most possession in a game regardless of who they're playing. Right. They'll stifle Italy a little bit because Italy won't be able to be as dynamic because Spain have the ability to pop the ball around and pass it. And pass. I'm not saying they've got a cutting edge. That's what they're missing. But in the midfield... For me, they're still going to have more possession than Italy. They're going to have more possession than England. They're going to have more possession than anybody they come up against. They're not going to change the way they play. And 
they're still going to create chances. It's just that they've not really been taking it. I believe if Spain had a Lewandowski or a or a you know a David Villa, a top class striker, they would be by far and away the best team in the tournament and the favourites. So they could they would be washing teams away, but they, they lack that. But when they come up against Italy, they will still have as much of the ball. They'll have. 55-60% of the ball against Italy. Can Italy go and press them? Can they do all the things that they've been doing against against Spain? Um, what they're missing is a, not even a cutting edge because they're creating chances. And I was getting a little bit frustrated listening to the commentators. They like the whole idea of you know Switzerland living out the dream and making the semi-finals and all the rest of it. Spain's downfall wasn't Switzerland's good defending. It wasn't the keeper. It was poor, poor finishing because that keeper made, I don't know, 20 saves and you'd be absolutely disappointed based on the efforts from the Spanish players if he wasn't making 20 saves. Um, if any of those goals went into that keeper, you'd be pointing the finger and going, he should be saving that. Mm-hmm. So, I don't, I genuinely think that Spain had enough chances there to take six, seven, eight goals off Switzerland. Switzerland ran their luck something rotten. Um, so, uh, it'll be interesting come the semi-final. That what Spain are missing to answer your question is somebody who can score goals. That, that's pretty much it. It's quite simplistic, but that's what it is. Um, they created numerous clear cut chances, no half chances, clear cut chances. Uh, they're nice to watch, they're nice on the eye. Um, it's just whether that when they come up against Italy, who probably will score one or two against them, can Spain take their five or six chances, which they've missed most of in the last few games. But look, they're lovely to watch. It's, it's a lot, it's going to be a, a great semi final. Um, Spain deserve to go through today, like I said, but. They're going to need to start taking their chances. That's that's what I will say. They're not going to win it. Italy are through to the semi-finals by two-one-one over Belgium. Barella and Insigne get the goals with Lukaku scoring a penalty for Belgium. Shankers, the Italians done it. They pretty much done it in the first half. Belgium trying to get back in the second half, but it was a it was a convincing performance by the Italians at the end, apart from the time wasting, which they was doing man not in. See, see, a couple of boys in, in our group chat were saying about that. But that that's just. I was saying that's what they do. Win right. at all costs. You, you must. It's it's the same way. I know this is going off in tangent, but Luis Suarez he gets uh, hounded for cheating, and the rest of it, I don't condone half the things he's done. But he's a winner, and and that's like that Chiellini and the rest of them down the room. And then he comes and catches a goes to catch a cross, fluffs it, and goes down on his face. I don't agree with it. But win at all costs. Right. See if he comes out and and he doesn't go down on his face. The ref might play on and score. So you win at all costs, and and that's the that's how they've been brought up almost. And to be fair, I thought the Italians. I said they're their own. I thought the Italians would kind of what one now and maybe do the game out, but they, they were still going for it. Then Belgium had a lot of the ball, but they were getting forced to, to cross for deep and and maybe shoot for distance and stuff like that. And Lukaku never really get as much time. The ball was coming into him back to goal what he likes to do but he was like he was getting forced to play it back the way rather than try and try and pin the defender in turn what, what he had I'm not sure that the Belgian player's name but the winger at the kept back to the, to the okay. left hand side okay. he, he looked he looked one of the kind of promising players that looked as if something could happen for him but as I said they were with a lot of the ball forcing Bel- uh, Italy were forcing them into crossing for deep and and shooting for distance and stuff like that, and they, they had a good game plan Italy and stuck to it. And fair play to them, they they look as if they've got half their name in the the trophy already. For me, they've been the kind of part of the wee block against Austria. But they've been almost a perfect tournament uh, so far. I think that's is it thirty two or thirty three games unbeaten or something now. Mm-hmm. So you wouldn't put it past them to go the, the whole way. Wilson, were you impressed by Italy tonight? Yes, I was. I um, I, ha- I have to admit, um, I didn't fancy them at the start of the tournament. I'll be honest, I didn't see them. Um, I know they never qualified for the last World Cup, um, but <clears throat> I I just felt they blew Belgium away, and I actually felt Belgium were really really disappointed. I know I t- tend to win it. That's probably why they didn't win it. Um, but I always I always think like, see, th- these are the big games, and you need your big players to show up. Now, De Bruyne, Lukaku tonight, where. Why I don't personally think they are world class players because they come up against world class opposition and they do very little, you know. Whereas players that play that you see Ronaldo over his career, 
when he comes up against the best, he's still better. He's a world class player. Chiellini tonight's come up against the world's one of the most on fire probably striker at the moment. Bosses it, you know. De Bruyne was a complete passenger tonight, um, and I mean I think Martinez has to take a lot of the blame. You know, having Sean Maloney got him to the number one uh, team in the world, they won the. Uh, the Nations League, and then he brings in Thierry Henry and it all goes belly up, you know? <laughs> so I, mean, I think he's got to take some of the criticism. And I do think, I, I think, you know, the Belgians with the golden generation and all these players, I think he got it wrong tonight, you know, because he's obviously seen the pace and the tempo that Atlee have been playing at, you know, and he plays like Aldevay, Red Vertonghen, who are, you know, not not the youngest of guys. Um and he's got a likes of Denier and, you, you know, Bouillard, younger guys, maybe with pace, maybe not as good as Bertolgen and Alderweireld on the bench. And so I actually think he, he got it wrong tonight in, in terms of that. Um, but don't take any way for Italy. They deserve to win that game 100%. Rory, you're the only one that's got a prediction of a team winning that's left in the, the four predictions here. Are, we, are you confident that we're going to go all the way after that? I hope so. I think they're the only team that I tipped to get in the last 16 that actually went through, and lucky enough, they're the team I tipped to win it. Um, look, they've got the potential to do it. Um, they're going to need to beat Spain, and you know, on paper, you would you would have to suggest it's going to be England um, to, to do it. So, two tough games. Um, but they're the best team to watch in the tournament. That's what I will say. Them and France were the best teams to watch. France were a team of individuals, whereas Italy are a team. You know, you look at your Pogba's, Benzema's, and you know it's, it's bitty, uh, and they've shown moments of brilliance and you know and, and flashes. Whereas he always felt, even Pogba's celebration, it was all about him. The Italian celebration, it's all about everybody. That type of idea, you know, they're defending a, a a cross across the face of the goal, like they've just scored the goal themselves. Mm-hmm. So it's that it's that type of mentality, I think, and it was evident from the first game where they came out the block's flying and they've never really stopped. I didn't see the Austria game myself, but there's, you're not going to play well every game. And as Shanker says, it's about winning. Um, and they've managed to do that so far. And again, you pick up, you know, you, you look at the fixtures and Italy are playing, you, you get excited, you look forward to it. Tomorrow night, I'm interested because England are playing and because we are so close, you're interested in it. Not particularly looking forward to the actual game itself. Um, whereas when Italy are playing at the moment and to be fair Spain as well um, you look forward to watching how they play football and things like that it's good football so certainly what I will say is if they do go on enough trophy they'll, they'll they'll be worthy winners yeah definitely do you think sorry do, do you think that Italy Spain semi-final will be played at the same tempo as tonight's game was or do you think it'll be more tactical walking. like a chess game do you not think Italy will walk in football do you know Italy will resort back to like the old Italy and nah. just defending, just I don't think so. I, I think what, what I said earlier, see Spain, Spain keep the ball for fun, and that'll be a tactic against Italy because Italy will the, Italy will get so frustrated. See if they can't come out the block, see if they can't right. press, see if they can't. That is how they've got to where they are and how they've played so well. Any team in the world who are capable of just bopping around a high press, it's Spain. Don't get me wrong, they might not always come out in you know the opposition's half with the ball, but it certainly won't be. High tempo. I don't think Wilson, absolutely not, but I think that'll be the Spaniards taking the sting out of the game, playing their way because they can, keeping the ball, ticking it over until the Italians start to get frustrated and that's when they start to pick holes and pick passes. Um, it's just when that occasion does come, can they score? It was, good, it, was good, it was good to see, sorry, it was good to see Pikey moaning about the sportsmanship and all that with the Italians when he was a big fan of it during the 2003 UEFA Cup final. He thought it was perfectly acceptable then. <laughs> You know, uh, but now, now he's now he's questioning that. You know, one of the other Scott, please. I just don't what, like. <laughs> what I would say as well is about Lukaku being world class and Ronaldo being uh, being world class. They played in the same league last year, and Lukaku finished first in the league. It was probably the best striker in the league. So I don't necessarily think that argument adds up this season. Count the medals, Scott Count Carson the medal over his top, career. Scott Carson finished top of the league in one city. Exactly. Lukaku is a dud. Dud at Everton, dud at Man United, dud at Chelsea, done all right one season and at Milan. Dud. Well, get, him on, get him on his shoulder, I'll tell him his face. <laughs> Bust my coop tonight, so get him on. <laughs> is that the real reason? <laughs> Absolutely. And, it, and what makes it worse is it was Rory's team that knocked me out. So get him and De Bruyne and Martin, get them off. Get them sacked. I had, we, we I had 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 
I had a double Spain both teams to score and Italy both teams to score. So uh, missed it just. You were talking in the group chat like see like half time and Italy's done two one and Belgium's doing a a wee bit of a G up in that. Like, I don't doubt for one minute that Sean Maloney isn't a world class coach, but like, just for the outside looking in, like, what, what do you think he's like saying to the Bruyne and stuff like that? I, I, I don't think that that's his role in there, to be honest. I think I, they're no, taking I know, I know he's no like a motivator or that, but like, you know, Rory, Marcel, and, and Wilson, if at half time, like, you'll go run and maybe have a wee individual word with somebody here and there saying, I, I like you if you would maybe try this or play this in the second half or that. Like, do you think, like, he will actually have a word with them and say anything or that? He's maybe, he's, he's, he's 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 maybe coach, saying, when like... I'm the Celtic manager, would you come and speak <laughs> for us? What well, do you think yeah. De Bruyne is thinking when he's telling them that? Like, I need but but, but, but I, I, think, I think you could look at that, you know, in loads of teams, you know. Ah, uh, you know. From what, you... from, what, from what I've heard about Martinez, because when I was coming through around the same time as um, McCarthy, uh, James McCarthy, I've had a couple of conversations with him just when I've been out and about and I've bumped into him and he's mentioned Martinez a couple of times and he said that he's unbelievably tactical, like his in-depth analysis is ridiculous. The whole game is based around tactics, whereas you look at the likes of Mourinho, his full game plan, You obviously he's a master tactician, we all know that and he has been in the past, but it's about motivation. He's a manager, whereas you look at Guardiola, who's more of a, a tactician. Yeah, He used to say that like the in-depth analysis was ridiculous and I just get the feeling from that, kind of coaching staff shankers himself um, and Maloney and, and all the rest of them I, I think it'll be all tactical based I don't think it'll be a G up at half time you even see Martinez with 10 minutes to go giving all this and all the numbers and all the all the, all the different things and I, I think it'll come from aye, you win the, <laughs> aye, that's what he does you win the game through trying to work out where the weakness lies in the opposition and getting into the pockets and do this and do that I can't see Martinez going in and giving it the old Right, boys, come on. This is a European Championship quarter fight. I can't see that side of it. And I would imagine Maloney will follow suit. And it'll be very much right. This is how Italy are playing. And this is how we hurt them in the second half. Whereas transitions and low blocks. Aye, ah, exactly. Is, 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 is that maybe where Thierry Henry's brought in? Been there, done it, got the t shirt. Possibly. You know, I mean, maybe a wee bit. Because, I mean, Shankers is right to a certain extent. You know, Sean Maloney's ripping into Lukaku. Lukaku <laughs> must be hanging. Wait a minute, yeah. You know, whereas if Terry Young reads written you, it'd be very few that could reply back to him, you know. See, when I was playing Ross County in the League Cup to final, Romelu, I used to do that. <laughs> <laughs> that is difficult. I thought he was just going to be going bar bar the hedge, Romelu. It is a difficult one because there, be, there will be plenty of coaches who haven't played at a good level who are exceptional huh? coaches. There was well, a guy Mar- thought- Mourinho didn't have a playing career. Mm-hmm. I, I know, but he kind of earned his respect. Aye, his trophies, aye. his trophies. Aye. All the time you be really Ian Castro. Ian Castro, that's... Huh? I, I had an assistant at, at, at Falkirk, James McDonough, who went to Edinburgh City as the manager. And mm-hmm. His knowledge of the game is phenomenal. He, he'd never played um, at, at, at any level. So you can be... You can know I've played the game and still, still be a good coach. I know Wilson hadn't played the game and he's a terrible coach, but... Um, <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's consistency, though. <laughs> That's consistency of both. Um, it, it, didn't, it didn't stop me telling you you were shite either. <laughs> to be fair, what I will say, you've seen the start of the second half in that game tonight. If you were taking the score away, you would have thought Italy were 2 1 down. They came out in the same match. There's a lot of teams who would I come out. To defend. Doors, Italy it? came out in the second half like they came out in the first half. Right, it's 2 1 to us, but we're, it's going to be 3 1. It's going to be 4 1. We're no sitting back. We're no, you know, in a knockout tie, we are 2 1. That's not easy to do. No, definitely. We'll move into the games tomorrow. We've got two, two other quarterfinals tomorrow. Wilson's very keen to talk about one of them. <laughs> Czech Republic played Denmark at five o'clock. Wilson, you excited? No, I'll be tuning into Wimbledon at that time. <laughs> um, they two teams were in the front garden and shut the curtains. <laughs> um, so, but I, I do, I, I do like Casper Michael. I like him. So, but hopefully, hopefully Denmark will go through in that one. But again, it. As I say, I think, that, I think there could be a few goals in that one, to be honest, though. As I say, I, I think I think a lot of fatigue setting in now. I think there's been a good few tired performances um, o- o- over these the quarterfinals and a couple of games in the last 16 as well. So I, I think there could be a few, a few goals tomorrow. So I'll go Denmark 3-2. Very good. Rory, I was, uh, quite, I was probably more impressed with Denmark as I've been with most other teams so far with their performance against Wales. Do you think Denmark will win tomorrow? 
Um, no, I, th- I think I think it'll be tight. I think it'll be a draw, a score draw. I think I think there will be goals as Wilson says. I've, I've got a little bit of a soft spot for Czech Republic. I don't know if it's just because they were in Scotland's group and kind of living the dream through them, but I've got a bit of a soft spot. I think they're a good side, and the boy Schicks is he's a game changer for them. So Get I hot. think um, was that he shit hot. Sorry, I'll get my jacket. Right. <laughs> right, thanks, um, everyone. Good night. <laughs> um, but I, I've got a bit of a soft spot for them. It would be, you know, I think I, I, don't, I don't really mind who goes through there, but if I had to pick a winner, I would be hard pushed. So I'll go with one each. Frank, we'll be thinking for tomorrow's five o'clock game. I think both these teams won't get a better chance to get to semi finals. I really hope they don't come out and I mean how many times have you seen it, games like this and both teams are scared to get beat so they are so reserved and they sit back and pure cautious I, I would just hope both teams realise right this is a quarter final of the Euros we're never going to get a better chance we're happy with the draw we've got against each other so so almost just go from no one to go gung-ho and play it like a, a five-a-side match or in, but don't want them to be sitting in and Try to catch each other on the counter. I hope it's it's nice, fast, free flowing football. And I fancy Denmark the way they played against Wales. I know Czechs just beat the uh, Netherlands and, and they're a better side than Wales, but football does really well. I think Denmark would have beat a lot of teams uh, last week the, the way they played. So so I fancy Denmark. I'm going to um, go 2 1. I fancy Denmark 2 0. We'll move on to the 8 o'clock game, but first of all, Wilson, will you be able to tell me if we pitch perfect to 8 o'clock night STV to watch the England game? Well, it'll be, it'll be turned over at 7.59 and 59 seconds uh, on mute. If I've got to listen <laughs> to any of those English commentators, whether it's Lineker or Sierra or Ferdinand, <laughs> who've already engraved the trophy and got it in their mantelpiece, um, because it's it's absolutely it, it demoralises before the game. I mean, even even tonight, you know, it was forty eight minutes of England and twelve minutes preview of Belgium, Italy, who could argue are the two best teams in Europe at the moment. You know, and it's it's so draining. You know, um, but unfortunately, I think England will easily take care of Ukraine again. Ukraine having to go to extra time at Hamden against Sweden. Um, can a wee, a wee bit of an effect. I don't think they've got. Anything like the quality that England possess, unfortunately. Yarmolenko, I quite like to look at him right enough as well. Um, but he's another one that's producing at the international level, it kind of get a game at club level. Yeah, right yeah, I, I think he's tasty. Um, but I can see England really running out easy winners tomorrow. Uh, 3 0, 3 0 England, unfortunately. Rory, how do you see England's game against Ukraine going tomorrow night? Similar to their group stage games, I would say they're, they're probably their first and their last, not so much the Scotland game, that had a little bit of a different feel about it, a totally different uh, di- dynamic, very um, rare that you get that type of fixture, but you know the, the game against Croatia and the game against Czech Republic, I think it'll be nil-nil at half-time and England will win it by hook or by crook in the second half and, and break them down eventually. Um, I see it on the show the other night and I stand by, if England go out before the final, playing the way they're playing, There'll be a large portion of the England support, despite beating Germany, that will want Southgate out. They're not playing good football. And when you look at their squad and you look at the players they've got, it's a tough watch. Um, it, re- it really is. I, I do think Gareth was... Southgate, what team would you pick tomorrow? Who would you play tomorrow night? I think I would revert back to a four at the back. Um, I would be tempted to... I would play Kane, but I would try and keep him further up the pitch. As Shank has touched on before, he's dropping He's dropping very deep. Um, listen, it's difficult. The, the, he's going to keep his two sitters with Rice and, um, and Phillips. It's just who he picks ahead of them. There's, there's one or two positions up for grabs. I think Sack will drop out again, and I think, he, I think he'll bring uh, Foden back in. Um, and, and Grealish will be an impact sub again. That's what I think. But I, think if Grealish, it, I can see Grealish starting and Mount coming in. Yeah, possibly. I mean, but it's one of those ones that, see, regardless, see the names we're rhyming off here, we should be able to sit down and enjoy the game and watch them play and and watch them playing. No once have I sat down and enjoyed watching them yet. I think tomorrow could be different just because of the opposition. I think I I, I really don't. I mean, Ukraine are a decent side, and I I I don't. I I think that 
there was more chance he's seen England playing fast flow and good football against Germany because Germany are, are more matched to play against England with you know similar type of players than you're going to get against Ukraine who are going to make it difficult for them and stuffy for them. I, I really don't see a, an interesting game. Um, but I'm going to say, I'm going to go as far to say it'll be 0-0 at half time, but England will find a way and, and win the game 2-0. Shankos, what do we think of tomorrow night's game? As Wilton says, I, I think it could be a comfortable night for England. Uh, you touched on there with, with Rory about what the team would be. Uh, I can see a few changes get made to, to maybe shoot a, a, a game where England don't have majority of the ball uh, all night. I would, if you're asking me what, what my, I would play and what, South, what I think Southgate would play, play is totally different. I think Southgate is a wee bit cautious with, with Rice and Phillips in there. I think a game where you're playing against Ukraine, you can afford to they only play one of them and, and drop one out and play. No chance. No Whether chance he's doing that. No, I'm not saying... Do I'm but... not saying... He, I, I don't think he'll do it. I'm saying I think you can't can't afford to do that. I don't think he will do it. I think he'll still play the two, but I'm saying I think he can afford to, to drop Rice or, or Phillips out and, and play, whether it's it's Mountain and Grealish uh, in front of Phillips or Rice or whether it's Bellingham or, or Foden or whatever, I, I think they can afford to do that in a game like this because they'll, they'll have so much to the ball and I think they're, they're far more capable, either, they're more than capable of dealing with what Ukraine's got to throw at them. So I think they can afford to do that, but I don't think it will be much further away from the, the Germany game. Maybe maybe one or two where Grealish comes in for... Grealish will come in, maybe since they've done well all night there, but then you might look at that as if, if things are going well, we can bring them on and they'll have the same impact. So a strange one, but as Rory says, they've not been, they've not been flattering uh, on the eye, but they've been getting results and and it's a results business, but if you go to the quarter stage or the semi-stage, mind you, they might bring out another DVD if they get to the semi-final, but... It'd be interesting if they go know. London to see how they react and how they deal mm-hmm. with that. Yeah, see if, I, I see if Ukraine quite, do do get a goal. I would quite like to see that because then I think you would see an England that you should see where they're attacking and and things like that. I think I think there's, there's that much pressure on them to like everything's almost in their favour by all the games at Wembley and and the route to the final and stuff like that. Where they're actually feeling pressure in games. And, I mean, they didn't really play like that all night. They just actually felt pressure. But I think when they the cards, uh, the shoes, another foot. Sorry, when they're playing that side like Ukraine, where they should be going and battling them three and, and four now. I think that's when England start feeling feeling the pressure a wee bit. And I mean, I would love to see them, love to see them go at, at this stage tomorrow. But I, I cannot see it at all. I think they'll be far too strong for for Ukraine, and I think it'll be one step, one hurdle too much for Ukraine. I can see England winning with two or three goals. Well, so during the psychological side of beating Germany will, will carry this England team on further now they know they've got that <coughs> burden off their back Yes and no I mean obviously they've got the, the rivalry with the Germans but and honestly mm. I was I was trying to think back there in my lifetime I don't think I've seen a poor as a, a German squad as that over the last in 65 years, years? <laughs> exactly <laughs> I, I know they won it in 74 but um if you look, even even just now, that's that's the poorest Spanish squad you'll have, you guys will have seen. You know, I mean, I've seen them much poorer than that. And I don't think there's an outstanding team. And I think that's where, when you're based on the England golden generation that never won anything that they talk about, I think they've always been a wee bit, and I don't know Rory and I spoke about this, and I only get beat for Iceland and that, but your Gerrards and Lampards were getting beat by very good German teams, very good Portuguese teams, very good Spanish teams, whatever it was. Whereas I don't think the England team's as good as it's ever been in the last 10 years. But I just think everything's kind of fallen into place. I say I don't see, you know, a great Dutch team there. I know, I know they're out now, but I, I don't see a great team in the whole tournament. Yes, I think the Italians are playing probably the best. Um, and Rory's right to identify a lack of striker that's Spain, but I don't think they're great. And then, but you look at the England team, you know, They've got some boys, as you say, we've spoken about Rice and the Yorkshire Pierlo, and you're thinking, who are these guys in comparison to your Lampards, Gerrards, etc.? And they're, 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 get, they're getting this far, as I say, but 
again, it's is it results over the way you play, you know, no disrespect, and it was a, some achievement at the time when Rangers got to UEFA Cup final, was it free phone attack in football or was it park the bus away from home and bring success? No. You know, I mean, they're not lost the final, but you know what I mean. So I, I think with the England players, I, I agree with the two sitters to a certain extent because I would just let, whether it's Mount and Grealish or Foden and Sterling and Kane, just go and win the games because they four or five guys are really, really good footballers. You know, um, and if he, if he can be compact, now I'm amazed that Pickford hasn't considered a goal. And I hope, good friend of the show, Alan Kerr, right? I saw his tweet the other night saying that Pickford's still not chucked a game yet for England. So I'm I'm hoping he's 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 right. I'll tell him that when I see him tomorrow. Um, but I I, I can't I can't see them with the the the, sco- the depth of squad that they have. You know, losing at all. So give us a final score prediction tomorrow. 3 now England. Rory. Uh, nothing needs a half time to an all England uh, full time. I think that will be kind of standard England during this tournament. Um, it'll be nothing needs a half time. I think the only game they've went one up before the break was the Czech Republic game, if I'm not mistaken. Mm-hmm. Um, I think it'll be stuffy. I think Ukraine will make it difficult. I think Ukraine will have chances. They're, they're one of these teams that are capable of a worldly goal from nowhere. Yarmolenko, as Wilson touched on, being one of them. Um, I think they'll have plenty of efforts from outside the box, and I think they'll be dangerous, but I think it'll be a pretty dull affair in the first half, quite cagey, um, and I think England will win, win 2-0. Um, Shankers? I, um, I agree, 2-0. 2-0 England, I think I think they could get a, an early goal and then almost take the foot off the glass a wee bit and then win. When Ukraine's pushing for a for an equaliser or that, and, and England's rung the changes, they'll they'll pick them off and and second them and and make it two 0 uh, die two 0 full time. So that'll be that's us pretty much done for the, this episode. Wilson, yeah, Nelson, what you had? Yeah, I was just going to touch on uh, what do you think of uh, Billy Gilmer's move to Norwich for the se- is a season long loan? I saw that. I saw that this morning. Um, I just wondered what, what your thoughts were on that. Do you know what I know? It's a perfect it's a perfect move to go to a team that plays football and he's going to th- kind of flourish in a team like that as opposed to going to like I know a bar a Burnley or a Sheffield United who are gonna Did they know finish bottom of the Premier League the last time they went up playing the same way? I know, but that's what, no, I'm not saying that they might do that, but I'm saying <laughs> Billy Gilmer will fight thrive a bit better in a, a team where he's allowed to carry the ball the way he does the way he does. But we'll see. See the, the way I looked at it. I mean, there's no doubt in his talent or whatever. But I wonder, you know, like just as Rory's kind of said there, like teams will be a bit on top of them, you know, because they'll be going to Carra Road looking for a win, especially the kind of top maybe eight or nine teams. I, I would actually wonder if he'd been better going to a better team, you know. I mean, I know Norwich play nice, attractive football, and that, and that maybe he's thinking. But I just wondered. I can see them easily being relegated again, to be honest. Um, but I, I, I just wondered, you know. Again, I didn't see much in the media in terms of other teams you could possibly have went to. I'm sure loads of teams would have taken them. One, one thing I would say about him, he's got a bit about him. He's not just like a nice wee player who... If oh, you I, him, I can if, mix if, if, if you hit him, then you don't see him again. It'll be an interesting one, though, because it's Norwich will have a good squad and he's going to go into a team and he's not established by any stretch. So I don't think he's going to walk into Norwich's team. Um, I think down there he's another signing for Norwich. I don't think he's looking at the Scotland games going or the Scotland squad going, oh, he's made the Scotland squad, we need to get him in or whatever else. I, I don't think he's going in as an automatic starter. I think he's going to need to prove himself. I don't think, um, I think it'll be tough for him, but hopefully, um, as you quite rightly touch on, Pikey, to be fair, kind of tongue-in-cheek what I was saying there, because they, they do like to try and play football, but um, he's also, which is important when you're moving clubs, I know he's went down to Chelsea as, as a young boy and he's made friends down there, but he's going into the squad where a couple of boys already knows mm-hmm. um, who'll look after him and take them under his wing. So, um, I'll, hopefully he does well but I think in the tougher games he's got enough about him to give the team something if he's not getting on the ball I think he's got a bit of dig um, and I think he's got a bit, of, a bit of heart so in some of these games with these nice attractive players if you're no got the ball you're no on top of the game the game can pass you by and you're that 60 minute sub that type of idea and then the next game you're on the bench I'd like to think that if it's no going well, he's got enough about him to still contribute defensively as well as offensively. So I think we would all back him <laughs> as, as Scots, but I, I think it's a difficult one to call. I really don't know how. I, I, the flip side of that is, you know, Norwich could, could struggle and 
there's no real place for that type of player on their team. Um, so it's it's a difficult one, but it's, I think it's it's got potential for him. But I, I I couldn't call it. It could go either way. I know I'm sitting on the fence a wee bit, which isn't like me, but I just don't know how that will work work out for him. It's an interesting one. I want to keep an eye on. Shankers, what do you think? I think first and foremost, it's it's a brave decision for him, and and a kind of mature one uh, of kind because. I think you could easily see some of the, the English kind of lower players. I think no English lower players, English younger players, maybe teams like Chelsea and Arsenal and stuff like that. They, they maybe went to be black, kind of looking at, I'm not going to go in Norwich and, and battle relegation all year and stuff like that, where he's had maybe a wee bit about him and, and thinking of it as a learning curve kind of thing. One thing I do think it could be an old pals act as well, both German managers, right? I'll give you a player for a season. Here, the, the, the football they play does suit him and it, it's going to test his character and stuff like that because at times the way when they've got the ball they like to play but a lot of the time they, they will not have the ball in a, in a team like Norwich play, when they're playing a lot of the, the teams in the Premier League I'm like Rory I, I, I don't know how it's going to go I would love it I mean I would love Norwich to stay up and finish mid-table and, and Billy Gum has a great season and he's heavily involved in, and stuff like that I, I don't really know what to make it, to be honest. I would have liked to see them maybe go to Germany or Portugal or, or Italy or something like that and, and go and, and play some football out there. I think it would really suit him and, and better for him going back to England. But I can see why Chelsea want to keep him in the Premier League. Uh, Norwich's make... first, first few fixtures, Liverpool, Man City, Leicester, Arsenal. <laughs> Well, that will test his character. I he think he'll be do well in the championship <laughs> next year. <laughs> <laughs> he'll be back at Chelsea for Christmas. But that, that's what I'm saying. Is, is it a shrewd move from Chelsea because he could have a full season at playing in the Premiership under his belt? I think at that level, I, I would. I understand what Shankers is saying, and that happens the world over in football and, and every business. Friends look after their friends, but I would like to think there would have been a little bit of chat between. Um, is it Far- Farqua? Farqua? Farqua. Lord Farqua. Um, <laughs> and, um, and Tuchel as to the way they play and how they want to play. And I, I would like to think Tuchel as well with the success he's had at Chelsea in a short spell seen there a bit, bit longer term when he'll want to develop Gilmer. It's not just away you go and we'll be here when you get back. So I'd yeah. like to think there's been a discussion taking place and Gilmer seems like he's got a sensible head on his shoulders and the people who lack, look after Gilmer, it's in their best interest that he does well as well. Um, in terms of them making money and stuff. So I would like to think that the correct footballing conversations have taken place. They understand that he's maybe going to come in and they're not going to be on top every game and they'll look after him. Um, so I do get what Shankers are saying. It might be an old pal, Zach, but hopefully, fingers crossed, it's for the right reasons and, and they'll look after him. I wouldn't they like to see Chelsea go and buy Declan Rice or something new. Because nah, I think that would be a kick the face because I think but somebody Billy touched Gilmer. on that somebody Billy said Gilmer could do just as good a job as, as him so if they go and spend £80 million on Declan Rice which uh, there's a lot of talk about, about it and and it could possibly happen and I just think somebody Billy said Gilmer's that just as good a player as him see with him going out and loan it then frees up a space in the Chelsea squad to so see see if there was an injury see if Gilmer was still at Chelsea and there was an injury it, it seems as though he would be next in line to step in whereas he takes himself out of the equation there and then yeah. Chelsea the type of club see if there is an injury and it would have been Gilmer they'll go and spend they'll get Rice in and then they'll spend another 8 million on someone else if they lose somebody so I think um, you're right it's a, it's a brave move for him definitely yeah, Rice is terrible he's terrible he better not go he better go to Chelsea no man United I'll tell you see that. the thing is Wilson he's no terrible it's just he's no half he's nowhere near the level that the English make him out to be aye, um, aye, that's always the same Aye. Aye, England, England centre mid has went from Gerard Lampard, Scholes, Man U, Chelsea, Liverpool to Leeds and West Ham. He's a great West Ham player. That, that's that's. Aye, yeah, yeah, yeah. Aye, aye, that, that, that's his last. His level for me. Aye. Definitely, we're going to wrap up the show there. It's getting late. <coughs> we're going to finish up. Thanks very much, Wilson, Rory, and Shankers for coming on the show. Good luck with Ukraine. Come on, lads, <laughs> you can do it. Thanks very much for tuning in, everybody. We'll see you tomorrow with a new show. Thank you. Cheers.